Va mo sto ritmo. Hey guys. Our group will discuss about the Republic of 166 or 10066 including the definition of terms and examples. So, what is Republic of 166 or 10066? The Republic of 10066 is an act providing protection and conservation of our national cultural heritage, threatening by National Commission for Culture and Arts or NCCA, its affiliated cultural agencies and other purposes. The Republic Act 10066 is a Philippine law created by Philippine Registry of Cultural Property. The law was signed into law on March 25, 2009. All registry of cultural properties of the countries are registered by Philippine Registry of Cultural Property in which the National Commission for Culture and Arts or NCCA is mandated to establish and maintain through appropriate cultural agencies and local governments. Any house that has significant importance to Filipino culture is declared to be heritage house by the National Historical Commission of the Philippines. The Republic Act 10066 includes the following like archives, art galleries, historical research, libraries and information services, Monuments and sites and museum. Why is it important for us to abide and know such law? Let us identify first the difference of an executive order to a republic act. An executive order is the acts of the president providing for rules of a general or permanent character in implementation or execution of constitutional or statutory powers shall be promulgated in executive orders. While our public act is a piece of legislation used to create policy in order to carry out principles of the Constitution. It is crafted and passed by the Congress of the Philippines and approved by the President of the Philippines. Meaning, if there is already a law, it can only be repealed by a similar Act of Congress or the Republic Act, and not by an executive order. So, what are the importance of the Republic Act 10066 or the National Cultural Heritage Act? First, it aims to provide protection, preservation, and promotion of the nation's cultural heritage. And with that, these properties will still be able to provide their purpose and contribute to the history. Second, it further provides that all countries' artistic and historic wealth constitutes the cultural treasure of the nation and shall be under the protection of the state. Third, it's because it preserves the Filipino cultural heritage gives us purpose and meaning of our lifestyle then and now. It showcases our beliefs and traditions, gives forms and shape to our values, custom, and aspirations. It also molds and ensures our identity as Filipinos. Fourth, it lets people appreciate the purpose of these cultural properties and understand how it plays an important role in our society. This law helps create a balanced atmosphere where the historic past coexists in harmony with the modern society. And lastly, it preserves objects significant to the archaeology, architecture, science, or technology for the study of human history because they provide a concrete basis. The next one is the definition of terms. The first definition of terms are the adaptive reuse. What is adaptive reuse? It refers to the utilization of buildings and other built structures and sites of value for purposes and other than that, for which they were intended originally in order to conserve the site and their engineering integrity and authenticity of design. And the next one is the anthropological area. It refers to any place where studies of a specific ethnolinguistic groups are undertaken, the properties of which are the value to our cultural heritage. And what is ethnolinguistic group? It refers to a group of people who share a common cultural ancestry and language. And the third one is the antique. It refers to a cultural property 
found locally which is 100 years in age, more or less, the production of which has been already ceased. Archaeological area shall refer to any place, whether above or underground, underwater or at sea level, containing fossils, artifacts, and other cultural like geological, botanical, zoological materials which depict and document culturally relevant paleontological, prehistoric, and or historic events. Next is archives. Shall refer to public and private records in any format which have been selected for permanent preservation because of their evid evidential, historical, and informational value. Otherwise known as archival materials collections or archival holdings such as the place, for example, building, room, storage area, where archival materials are kept and preserved, and an organization or agency or part thereof whose main responsibility is to appraise, arrange, describe, conserve, promote, and make, make archival materials available for reference and research are also known as archival agency. Next is built heritage. Shall refer to architectural and engineering structures such as, but not limited to, bridges, government buildings, houses of a century, traditional dwellings, quarters, train stations, lighthouses, small ports, and educational and technological and industrial complexes and their settings and landscapes with notable historical and cultural significance. So next is what we call the collector, or it is referring to any person who or institution that acquires cultural property for purposes other than sale. Next is commission which is referring to the National Commission for Culture and the Arts, or NCCA. And lastly, conservation, which is referring to all the processes and measures of maintaining the cultural significance of a cultural property, including, but not limited to, preservation, restoration, reconstruction, protection, and adaptation, or any combination thereof. Cultural education shall refer to the teaching and learning of cultural concepts and processes. It seeks to develop among Filipinos greater awareness, understanding, and appreciation of their culture and arts. Towards the evolution of a consciousness that will improve the quality of their lives, cultural education can be encouraged by generating awareness among individuals in terms of morality, ethics, values, norms, principles, and standards. Philippine Cultural Education Program can also help us to discover more about the cultural education especially in our country which is Philippines. Cultural Heritage Worker shall refer to an individual undertaking cultural heritage work. They preserve historic sites and landscapes so that the general public can enjoy them for years to come. They are responsible for the conservation and management of heritage sites like historic buildings, landscapes, museum, ancient museums, and other properties. Cultural heritage shall refer to the totality of cultural property preserved and developed through time. It is the legacy of tangible and intangible heritage assets of a group or society that is inherited from past generations. Cultural heritage implies a shared bound and our belonging to a community. It represents our history and our identity are bound to the past, to our present, and the future. In an era of globalization, cultural heritage help us to remember our cultural diversity and develop mutual respect and renewed dialogue amongst other cultures. Heritage Zone refers to historical, anthropological, archaeological, 
artistic, geographical areas and settings that are culturally significant to the country. As it is declared by the National Historical Institute and or by the National Museum, it is said that local government units are in charge of maintaining heritage zones. Dealer refers to a person who acquires a cultural property and engages in acquiring and disposing the same property through a lawful act. What is cultural institution? A cultural institution, also known as a cultural organization, is a group within a culture or subculture that seek to preserve or promote culture. Museum, libraries, and archives, cathedral, and art galleries are example of cultural institution and in a modern civilization. What is cultural property? A product of human creativity by which a people and nation rebuilding their identity, including churches, mosaic, and other places of religious worship, schools, and natural history specimen inside. Whether public or privately owned, movable or immovable, tangible or intangible, it is the act how defines cultural property. What exactly does the term cultural property imply? Cultural property is defined as property that is explicitly defined by each state as being of value of archaeology, prehistory, history, literature, art, or science on a religious or secular grounds. If you will think about it, there are things in our past that we can touch, smell, or see. But still, we keep it in our memories. We can reminisce those things. Here is the reason. Intangible heritage signifies the different practices in a community. Unlike tangible heritage, intangible heritage is not a physical concrete item that exists intellectually in the culture. It includes the practices, representation, expression, knowledge, or skills considered by UNESCO to be part of places' cultural heritage. UNESCO aims to ensure the better protection of important untouchable cultural heritage worldwide and raise awareness of its significance. But what is the significance of intangible heritage? Intangible cultural heritage is a critical component in maintaining and preserving cultural diversity in the face of globalization. It is made up of non-physical intellectual richness such as beliefs, traditions, knowledge, practices, and language of other cultures that aid intercultural discussion and foster mutual tolerance for different ways of life. And it also refers to the vast amount of knowledge and abilities that are transmitted from one generation to new generation in order to maintain the culture's humanity and continuity. But remember, for intangible to be kept alive, it must be remain relevant to a culture and regularly practiced and learn with the communities and between generations. The importance of intangible cultural heritage is not only the cultural manifestation itself, but rather the wealth of knowledge and skills that is transmitted through it from one generation to the next. The social and economic value of this transmission of knowledge is relevant for minority groups and for mainstream of social groups within a society. And it, and it is important for developing society as for developed ones. Intangible cultural heritage does not only represent inherited traditions from the past, but also a contemporary rural and urban practices in which diverse cultural groups take part. We may share expressions of intangible cultural heritage that are similar to those practiced by others whether they are from the neighboring village, from a city on the opposite side of the world, or have been adopted by peoples who migrated and settled in different regions. They are all intangible cultural heritage. They have been passed from one generation to another, have evolved in response to their environments, 
and they contribute to giving a sense of identity and continuity. Providing a link from our past to the present and into our future. Intangible cultural heritage does not give rise to questions of whether or certain practices are specific to a culture. It contributes to a social cohesion, encouraging a sense of identity and responsibility which helps individuals to feel part of one or different communities to feel part of society at large. And these are the local examples of intangible cultural heritage according to UNESCO. The first one is the Hudhud chants of the Ifugao. The Hudhud consists of narrative chants traditionally performed by the Ifugao community, which is well known for its rice terraces extending over the highlands of the northern island of the Philippine archipelago. It is practiced during the rice showing season at harvest time and at funeral wakes and rituals. Thought to have originated before the 7th century, the Hudhud compromises more than 200 chants, each divided into 40 episodes. A complete recitation may last several days. The second one is the togging rituals and games. The togging rituals and games in the rice farming culture of East Asia and Southeast Asia are enacted among communities to ensure abundant harvest and prosperity. They promote social solidarity, provide entertainment, and mark the start of a new agricultural cycle. Many talking rituals and games also have profound religious significance. Most variations including two teams, each of which pulls one end of a rope attempting to tug it from the other. Inscribed in 2015, the representative list of the intangible cultural heritage of humanity. Third is the Darangan Epic of Maranao people of Lake Lanao. The Darangan is an ancient epic song that encompasses a wealth of knowledge of the Maranao people who live in the Lake Lanao region of Mindanao. The element was described by UNESCO as the one of the representative intangible elements of humanity in 2005. It was later inscribed as a UNESCO intangible heritage element in 2008. And lastly is Buklog. Buklog is an elaborate Thanksgiving ritual system of the Subanen, an indigenous people in the southern Philippines. They include asking the spirit for permission to gather materials from the forest, representing coin offerings, inviting the spirits of the departed to feast, invoking spirits of water and land, and music and dance. The craft tradition handmade weaving in Upper Egypt or Said is a complex process that requires time, effort, patience, and practice. Many steps and techniques are involved in the loom preparation, like threading and weaving. To achieve the final product for centuries, men and women have used their inherited knowledge and artistic talent to create embroidered textiles, both as a family legacy and as a profession. Nogaku is the principal form of Japanese theater and has influenced the puppet theater as well as kabuki. Often based on tales from traditional literature, Nogaku theater integrates masks, costumes, and various props in a dance-based performance. Nogaku encompasses two types of theater, no and kayojen, which are performed in the same space in no Emotions are represented by stylized conventional gestures. The distinctive mask, for which no is renowned, are used for the roles of ghosts, women, children, and old people. Kyojen, on the other hand, relies less on the use of mask and is derived from the humorous place of the Sangaku, as reflected in its comic dialogue. Bailas Chinas are brotherhoods of musicians who express their faith 
through music, dance, and singing in the context of commemoration festivities. The practice stretches mainly from the area known as the Norte Chico to the central region of Chile and comprises five fully differentiated styles. It is also organized mainly by men from rural areas. Baile Chino dances consist of jumps and flexing movements of the legs, performed to the rhythm of isometric instrumental music played on drums and flutes of pre-Columbian origin. They function as a model for social integration and cohesion to which almost the entire local community subscribes out of a sense of identity and solidarity. In India, yoga is their ancient practice in India traditions. So in basically based on their unification mind, body, soul in order to improve their mental health, physical body, and their well-being. Second in Belgium, in their culture they called beer culture. Beer culture is the one of their most events in their culture. They have three categories in their culture. One is social practices. Second, rituals and festivals events. The third one and lastly, traditional craftsmanship. Hi everyone, my name is Giancarlo Jesra from TM5D. I will share what I have learned from the previous topics we've discussed from this midterm. I will be tackling the topic intangible cultural heritage and the foreign examples. First is the meaning of intangible cultural heritage. Intangible meaning not to able to be touched or grasped. Thus means this topic consists of folklore, customs, beliefs, traditions, knowledge, and language of a heritage from a certain country. The examples that are given from the report are the yoga, which came from India. It is traditionally taught by gurus. By Lichino from Chile, a festival full of music, dance, acrobatics, chants, and a festival where the women lead the men. No Gako Theater, a theatrical act showing the 16th century era of Japan. This tradition shows the importance of their history. The handmade weaving in Upper Egypt, as they call it, Said. And my favorite is the beer culture in Belgium, who doesn't like a good beer. I personally fully support this custom and 100% willing to participate in it. These are the wonderful examples from the report. There are plenty more intangible cultures from many, many countries. Her heritage tourism is a great topic and so fun to learn. It taught me how beautiful each and every country is and how creative us can be when it comes to traditions. It gives us a sense of identity and teaches us how rich our culture can be. Thank you very much for listening and I hope you enjoyed my short video. <laughs> What is Filipino heritage? The culture of the Philippines is comprised of traditional Filipinos and Spanish Catholic traditions with the influence of American and other parts of Asia. Filipinos are also a hospitable people who love to have a good time. This often includes getting together to sing, dance, and eat. Houses and monuments from Batanes to Tawi-Tawi represents the culture and the periods in the Philippine history. How can we preserve cultural heritage in the Philippines? The UNESCO declares two approaches to preserve cultural heritage. The first one is to record it in tangible form and conserve it in an archive. And the other is to preserve it in a living form by ensuring its transmission to the next generation. For example, buildings like museums and libraries whose main and effective purpose is to preserve and exhibit some movable cultural properties. In terms of intangible heritage like traditions, it must remain relevant to culture and must be regularly practiced by the communities and the future generations. Good day, I am Lovely and today we will discuss about the HPD or also known as Historic Preservation Division. It is the Authority on Historic Preservation Program of the NHCP. It undertakes projects and activities geared towards collaborations 
coordinations and our partnerships with other government agencies and offices in the private sectors in the field of historic preservation. Each PD goals and objectives. The aims to promote Filipino heritage through preservation, protection, and development of historic sites and structures and the conservation of material objects. The Heritage Conservation Heritage conservation plays a major role in helping define the identity we probably showcase today by reminding people of how prosperous our past has been. Our built heritage is evidence of our political history and socio-economic development and ultimately mirroring our shared values and the excellence and creativity of the Filipinos. Protecting this should be a priority for the Philippines given its rich history and very engaged community of stakeholders that promise all-out support to initiative done the right way. The Heritage Conservation is also under the Republic Act No. 10066, otherwise known as the Philippine Cultural Heritage Act, aimed to provide for the protection, preservation, and promotion of the nation's cultural heritage. This was initiated by then-Commissioner for SCH Police Prudente Santa Maria and former Executive Director Carmen Di Padilla as an advocacy mandate of the NCCA. Filipino Heritage Protection as a tool for economic and urban development. Protection of heritage is not only keeping our semblance of the backward past of its historic significance, but also for its potential to increase income earning opportunities, city livability, and competitiveness. Many nations have already ventured to heritage conservation as an economic and urban development. Example is in Thailand. The community was able to preserve wats or old temples and structures that today it serves as a famous tourist attractions. It's not only a help to attract tourists but also to generate employment opportunities. Another example is in Indonesia. They able to preserve their rice terraces not only to ensure rice sufficiency, but also to provide great tourist attractions. And here in the Philippines, one example is in Bigan Alokusur. Through heritage tourism, the city was able to develop from being a second-class municipality to first-class municipality and also got recognized by the UNESCO for best conservation. Good day, I am Regine Magno and I will discuss the first step on how Filipino heritage is protected. First, protecting through education and supporting the cause. By researching, reading, and traveling, we must open our senses whenever we visit a place for the first time to absorb whatever information we can and to experience them. By traveling, we can learn more than what we read from books and documents, and we get to understand what we learn better as we witness culture through our travel encounters. It is true that traveling forces you out of your comfort zone. It also exposes you to different cuisines and culture and helps you realize how diverse our world truly is. Travel is the epitome of experiential learning, making it one of the reasons why travel is the best education that money can buy. And the other factor is by supporting organizations that will advance this cause. There are a number of national, international, and local organizations and government bodies that long to provide revenues for understanding, exchange, and appreciation of our cultural and heritage. One of the well-known organizations is the UNESCO or United Nations Educational, Scientific, and Cultural Organization. They have declared World Heritage Sites and have come up with programs so that nations and societies protect and preserve these sites. Another organization is the International Council on Monuments and Sites or ICOMOS. And lastly, the Philippine government has bodies like NCCA or National Commission for Culture and the Arts and NHCP or National Historical Commission of the Philippines which are mandated for the preservation and promotion of our cultural and heritage. Step 2. Preserving by Documentations, Events and Campaigns First is Heritage Mapping. 
Heritage mapping is a process of collecting, recording, analyzing, and synthesizing information in order to describe heritage resources, links, networks, and patterns of usage of a given community. This mapping is done with the help of technology. By simply taking pictures and posting it on your social media, you are already making a big difference to support our own Filipino heritage. Second is holding and attending seminars, workshops, and talks on cultural heritage. Conferences are a way of bringing people who are like-minded in discussing and sharing information about the present track and the future of our cultural heritage. Some of the examples are the third UNWTO and UNESCO World Conference on Tourism and Culture and the Escuela Taler in Intramuros who teach young men and women about the built heritage and heritage conservation. And always remember that because of heritage, we know who we were before and who we are right now. Third step would be promoting by raising awareness and encouraging dialogue. First is your blogs and social media posts. Back when blogging and social media was popular, blogging was a thing then. Although it is not prevalent as it once was, blogging is as influential as it was. We can write a blog about our travel experience and historical site, or we can compose a compelling article about our local cultural heritage that readers can be drawn to and get educated. Also, social media posts can be a tool to raise awareness and encourage discussion about our heritage. We can do research through interviews with experts or knowledgeable people regarding our local or Philippine history. Next is participating in festivals and promoting them. Festivals are not just venues of having fun and feasting on great food. It is a coming together of people with shared beliefs and cultures. It is also an expressive way to celebrate rich heritage, culture, traditions, and play an important role to add structure to our social life and connect us with our families as well as people with different race or background. In addition, Festivals are one of an important element to educate cultural heritage in general people and for development. Lastly, cultural heritage festivals are widely well thought out in contribution to the economic development of the local organizer by means of providing employment, attracting tourists, and promotion heritage. Good day everyone! My name is Laya Mepungolo from BSDF 5B. And today we are going to discuss about promoting our own Filipino heritage. Well, the word promoting is to simply informing the people of the persuasive requirements to the promotions of the heritage, awakening the mindfulness and interest of people to make them feel the apprehensive by the promotion of heritage. And it can be done in different ways such as heritage trails, heritage walks, heritage awards, street plays, heritage newspapers, and promotions of heritage in education can be undertaken under the street provision. Heritage trails are walking trails and driving roads in urban and rural settings that are identified by signage and guidebooks are relating, as relating to cultural heritage. While Heritage Walk is a tool to explore the unexplored and neglected, neglected richness of the country. While Philippine Heritage Awards is a, an annual conservation recognition program under which monetary prizes, awards, and citations will be given by the President of the Philippines. Well, lastly is the street play or street theater is a form of theatrical performance and presentation in outdoor public spaces without paying audience. Vamos turismo. Vamos, turismo.